typically in the morning, you wait at the shanty till seven o'clock. You go in at seven, you start walking your way up the ladder, climbing up the steel. Every two floors, you plank it off. Then you disconnect the bottom of the mast and you tie it to the boom on top of the choking cable. You got a heavy block on the job, probably weighs 200, 250 pounds, something like that. I saw it when I was 18 years old working structural steel. I worked on towers probably 120, 130 feet high. One of the things they say about somebody with an inferiority complex is they're afraid of heights. So automatically, every iron worker has got an ego. You're doing something that somebody else can't do. And you wear a tool belt. You know, when you're a kid 18 years old and you have wrenches in like a holster, you're like a cowboy, a sailor. If I put a two by four on the floor, I couldn't knock you off with a stick. But if I put it up 50 feet and a little gust of wind comes and you overreact, you end up falling off. That's why most iron workers start off as kids. When you're 18 and just out of school, the guy next to you walks the beam, you're gonna try and walk the beam too. Iron workers very, very rarely fall in the hole. That's what our term is. If somebody falls off a building, they fell in the hole. We talk a lot about it among ourselves. You iron work long enough, you're gonna get some real scares. I notice myself, I get a copper taste. You know, when you put a penny in your mouth when you were a kid, you know that taste? It's a taste of fear, I guess. As you get older, you reconcile yourself to the fact that it's easier to drop down and coon across the beam, we call it. It's easier, but you lose all the hair on the inside of your legs. You can always tell an iron worker because they don't have any hair on the inside of their legs. Another bad thing. Up here, we don't have any outhouses or anything, so we gotta piss in the columns. Everybody's always drunk the night before, so they're always expelling themselves down these columns. But the problem with that is that eventually something's gonna happen where you're gonna have to work down below. <laughs> yeah, and the worst thing in the world is you have to burn something down there, you know? It's, it's like cooking a toilet. But I always knew I was gonna be an iron worker. My older brothers were iron workers, my father was an iron worker, so it was a natural course of events. My father was very disappointed I didn't go to college. We had a college boy at work this summer. One time he saw a book in the back of my pocket. He was amazed. He says to me, you read? <laughs> That's what can get to you sometimes, you know, the non-recognition by other people. To say a man is just a laborer, a woman is just a housewife, it bothers you sometimes. Sometimes, some mornings, I look across the skyline for a building I worked on, say, uh, that office building right there. And I look down and I can see a big fancy car pulling into the parking garage I built. And I know some guy from the Burbs is driving it, and I know he's never going to think about me. But I think about him sometimes, you know, driving his air-conditioned car into his air-conditioned office, just sitting back there enjoying the ride. Damn this traffic jam, how I hate to be late, hurts my motor to go so slow. Damn this traffic jam, time to get to work, my car to be cold. Damn this traffic jam. Well, I left my house about 6 o'clock, took 15 minutes to go three blocks. Just in time to stand in line with the freeway looking like a parking lot. Damn this traffic jam, how I hate to be late, hurts my motor to go so slow. Damn this traffic jam, time to get to work, my car to be cold. Damn this traffic jam. Well, I almost had a heart attack looking in the rearview mirror. Saw myself the next car back looking in the rearview mirror. About to have a heart attack, I said. Damn this traffic jam, how I hate to be late. Hurts my motor to go so slow. Damn this traffic jam, time to get to work, my car to be cold. Damn this traffic jam.